Alright, welcome back to our second video tutorial for Creo. Today we're going to be making a simple extrude and a simple revolve. So as you can see, this is the part we're going to be making. Uh, let's get over into Creo and start. Uh, just like last time, we're going to want to set up our working directory. Uh, again, just select the working directory icon up here. Uh, drill down to wherever you want to save everything to and hit OK. Then we're going to do new. We want it to be a part, a uh, subpart. Give it a name. So simple revolve 4 because I think I actually have a couple of these already. And we want it to be a default template and hit OK. That's going to bring us to the main screen here. Uh, we're going to start with the, this uh, bottom block down here. So that's just going to be another simple extrude like we did last time. So just extrude, we're going to use the front datum plane this time instead of the right. And we're going to then do the sketch view. Uh, last time we worked on using the uh, regular line command and we used this corner rectangle command. Uh, this week we're going to actually start with the center rectangle. That's going to help us with the orientation of the part. It's going to give it uh, a lot of symmetry and it's just going to help us with placement of the revolve later on. All right. Uh, so the, how this uh, center rectangle actually works is you click the c where you want the center of the rectangle to be and then you can drag out where you want the corners. For this uh, tutorial we want to uh, make everything symmetric about the origin and the front, right, and top datum planes. So we're going to click the origin and then dra you can see how we drag out the corners again. Uh, that's fine. Again, be like last time, dimensions aren't all too important. so. That's fine for us. We're then a uh, green check mark, and you can see that we have our block. Last time I showed you how we can change the depths of uh, the different of the extrude here. You can go down and click the distance down here. Another option that you actually have is to use this white uh, block here. If you click and hold that, you can actually drag the feature and kind of get like a rough estimate of where it needs to be. If you don't, if it's not super critical. Um, so there's that. Uh, again, like I said, because we want to have all our datum planes at the origin and we want everything to be symmetric, we're going to use the extrude both sides command. And again, you can still see that you can use these uh, white check marks or these white blocks here. And you can still get that uh, feature to drag the stuff with that command. So with that, uh, that's fine for what we want it to be. Again, like I said, dimensions aren't too important. So green check mark to get out of that. And our next step is to create the revolve. Um, so as you can see it's just kind of like a shaft with a circular donut type thing on the top. Uh, so to start this off we want to use the revolve command up here in the ribbon and we're going to have to select our datum plane again. Uh, for this we want to use the um, front datum plane. So select that and then we're going to use the sketch view again. And just like last time we're going to have to add a couple references so just click this top reference and solve and close. And now we have our references. The next step that we have to do, and you have to do this for any type of revolve, if you're doing any type of mirroring, um, you have to do this for some arrays and stuff like that, we'll get into that later, is you have to add a center line. So to do that, you're going to come up to the ribbon and you click on this command here, this icon, and that's the center line command. And what it's going to do is it's going to create an infinitely long center line. And uh, so how we want it because of how we're revolving it because this is the axis that our feature will be revolved around um, we're gonna revolve around this uh, datum plane here the right datum plane so we're gonna put our center line on there as it, as you can see it creates an infinitely long uh, center line for us to use so now we're gonna start with our uh, shaft here you can see we're just gonna go up and then we're gonna use to create this donut type looking thing we're gonna go through and we're gonna use the three point art command, art command. Uh, to do this you're just gonna first click on the first end point here and then you're gonna click somewhere else that you want it to be and then kinda just drag it over and that's gonna create that uh, art command if we want it to get a little bit more if we want it to look a little bit more how the actual uh, part over here looks. We're going to actually add a uh, we could add a tangent, we could add a, a fillet if we wanted to. So let's go through and we'll add this uh, 
circular fillet. So we'll go through, we'll select those two commands, and you can see it automatically creates a smooth curve between them. You can go through if you want to add a dimension to it, so you can add the radius of it. So maybe we want it to be 20. Alright, and then you can see this actually crosses over our uh, center of our uh, axis here, so we're going to just kind of drag this back. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to uh, close off the um, sketch. So how we can do that is click on the open endpoint. We can create a line, um, drag it over to the uh, center line, and then we can close off our feature. It is important to note that your uh, feature does not have to actually touch the center line. Um, so to show that, if I go through and delete these couple lines here, I can go through and just go like that. And you'll see that it still actually um, will revolve around this uh, center line and this axis. So to show that, we're just going to go through a green check mark, and you can see that we now have our part. Again, because it wasn't actually touching this uh, our axis of revolution, um, you can see that we have this kind of hole in the center. If uh, I didn't want that to be there, I could go in and adjust that. So to do that, um, we can go over here to our model tree. Uh, if we use this down arrow here, get into our section. That's actually for the extrude. So get into a section for the revolve here. And we can't do it that way because we're still in the revolve. So the other option to do it would be to go up to placement and then where it has sketch and you click edit and that will get you back into the sketch command if you want to go through and edit anything. Uh, so maybe I didn't want that uh, hole there. Um, so we'll go through and we will close that off and now you can see whenever we get out of it that it is uh, solid through that center. Um, again, like last time, you can go through and you can adjust the depths of everything, or for this, how far it's in the angle of revolve. Uh, you can use the white uh, box here again. You can drag it. Uh, there's a couple different depth options. There's the extrude on both sides again. You can see you can still use that box. Um, for this, we just want it to go through 360 degrees, and we're just going to use the blind. Um, you can also go through and use revolves to make cuts if you use this remove material command. Um, so there you go. With that, we're going to do the green check mark. You can see that we have our part. Again, how I was trying to show you earlier to get through if you needed to go through and edit something. Um, if you click over here in the model tree, you can right click and it'll bring up this uh, menu here and you can do edit definition and it gets back in. You can change uh, how far you needed the revolver and stuff like that. So we're not going to save any changes to that. So we want to cancel, hit yes. Um, if you need to go through and change the sketch, just click the down arrow here for whatever feature it needs to be. Uh, go into the sketch command, so right click on sketch and do edit definition. And you can see that you can get back into the sketch and you can adjust things that way. Um, maybe for this we wanted the height to be larger, so maybe we wanted it to be 100. And then you can go through, hit the green check mark, and you can see it autom automatically makes that change for you. So just like uh, last time, the final thing that we're going to do before saving is we're going to go over to render. We're going to uh, change the color of everything. So uh, pick whatever color you want. Choose yellow this time. And we'll hit OK. And there you go. You can see we have our part. Uh, the final thing that we need to do is just save it. So we click the save icon. You can see it's already saving to where we set our working directory. We have our name already. Uh, so just click OK. And that's it. Hopefully this helps, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.